Yes, I am. Could you direct me to a place called Frontierland? Oh, I certainly can. Frontierland is right here. Oh, at last. Did I have a time getting here? Have you ever tried to cross Taylor Road with all those cars and trucks out there? Every day, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Boys and girls, are you having fun at vacation Bible school? Yeah! How many of you combed your hair before you came to Bible school today? Alright, some of you are lying to me, but that's okay. Alright, alright. How many of you brushed your teeth before you came? Good, 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 good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. Are you ready for another part of our story from Frontierland? Yeah! Whoa, Mike Fink and his rats used to cheat and steal from folks all over Frontierland. But now that Davy Cricket's here, it's time for law and order. And that's when we mess things up for good! No more player on Friday! No more fun! No more games! And no more ice cream! And then I'll, I, I mean we, will be in charge again. And I'll be the king of the wild frontier! She 
had compassion on Moses. Compassion means that you just love somebody. So when she opened the basket and she saw a little baby in there, her heart was immediately filled with love for him. And she God put that there because he gave Adam and Eve a free will. Boys and girls, you can choose to do right or you can choose to do wrong. or a friendship with God. And when I ask them about it, some people say, well, mine's really good. God and I are really close. And some people say, uh, you
Wow, what a great week of Vacation Bible School. We had a fantastic time, filled with crazy skits, fun games, and more importantly, God's Word. We were able to explain from God's Word to each child who came what it means to have a relationship with God. That's very important to us here at Good News Baptist Church. We want everyone who comes in contact with our ministry to know what it means to have a relationship with God and how they can have that relationship through Jesus Christ. With that in mind, I'd like to ask you to watch the following video presentation. It explains about having a relationship with God and asks the question, how would you describe your relationship with God? 
If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us here at the church. You can call the phone number that's on your screen, and we would love to be able to speak with you and answer any questions you might have. Thank you again for allowing your kids to be a part of Frontierland Vacation Bible School. We look forward to seeing them again next year. How would you describe your relationship with God? Some people say that it's close, it's distant. I asked a guy once and he said it's on the blink right now. Let me ask you another question. What do you think it takes to have a relationship with God, to know that you're going to live with Him forever in heaven? When I was a young man, I made a decision to trust Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. When we make a decision when we're young, we really don't know how it's going to affect us when we get old. A few years ago, I was in an automobile accident in which I did not know whether I was going to live or die. And as I was in that situation, I found myself at great peace because I knew that if I died, I would be with Jesus in heaven. What about you? Are you 100% sure that all of your sins are forgiven, that you're going to heaven? 1 John 5 tells us these things, the Bible, have I written that you may know that you have eternal life. God wants us to know, and you can know. Let me show you from the Bible how to have a close relationship with God. In order to be able to have a close relationship with anyone, you have to get to know them, know what they're like. And I'd like to just share four simple truths about who God is and how those truths relate to us. First of all, the Bible tells us that God is holy. And the word holy is an interesting word. It literally means separate or distinct. God is different from anyone else. He's distinct from everyone else. But it also means that He is separate and distinct from sin. There's a verse in the Bible that says that God is of purer eyes than to behold evil, and He can't even look on sin. And the Bible tells us that our sin separates us from God, that He can't tolerate our sin because of His nature and because of our sinfulness. Everyone defines sin differently. The real issue is God defines sin as the breaking of His law. Sin is the transgression of the law. The Ten Commandments are not just a set of rules to live by or to hem us in. They are a reflection of God's character. When God said, you should have no other gods before me, He is telling us that there is no God like Him. And for us to have another God or something in our life more important than Him is an offense to His character. When God says, you should not commit adultery, it's because He's faithful God, and our unfaithfulness is an offense to His faithful nature. Have you ever told a lie? God says you should not lie. I asked that question to a lot of people. I had one guy uh, uh, tell me once that he'd never told a lie, but he was lying to me. And uh, all of us, somewhere along the line, have stretched the truth, told a story in a way that made us look better than we really looked. What about you? Have you ever told a lie? The Bible says that it's an offense to God's truthful nature. All of this leaves us with a dilemma because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory of God is His standard of perfection that He has for each one of us. Think of it this way, if you and I were going to have a contest to see which one of us could jump to the top of a 40-foot flagpole, now you could probably jump higher than I could jump, but neither one of us could jump to the top of a 40-foot flagpole, it's way too tall. The same thing with trying to be good enough to have a relationship with God. Some people are better than others, but no one has ever lived without sin. No one has ever come up to the standard of God's holiness, of His glory. Now, there's more to who God is than this, but if this was all we knew about God, who would be able to have a relationship with Him? Obviously, no one. Now, frankly, the news about who God is and how it relates to us gets worse before it gets better. The Bible tells us that not only is God holy, but He's also just. He's the just judge of all the earth. And as the just judge of all the earth, He has to judge 
all of us by the exact same standard. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin, His standard of judgment for us, is death. The wages of sin is death. Now you may be wondering, what is death? Because even people who are going to heaven die physically. What does that mean? Well, there's a verse in Scripture where Jesus is talking about the end times. And He tells us, then shall God say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, that's a picture of God's judgment. And in that picture of God's judgment, he tells us that this lake of fire was actually prepared for the devil and his angels. God never intended men to go to hell. But it also shows us that some men, those on his left hand, are going to go to the lake of fire if I were you. I'd want to know who those men are. The last book of the Bible, Revelation, gives us a list of people who have to go to hell. It says that the unbelieving and the fearful and the abominable and murderers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now that's that death that God told us we've earned because of our sins. That's a pretty rough list. Probably most of the things on that list you haven't done. But let me ask you a question. How many murders does a man have to commit before we consider him a murderer? Just one. How many lies do you think a person would have to tell before God would consider him a liar? Just one. And all of us, if we're truthful, have lied. The Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. You may be saying, wait a minute, I thought God was a God of love. How could a loving God send someone to this awful place? Think about this. If there was a judge in a courtroom and he was judging a murder trial and it was obvious from the evidence that the defendant was guilty, and the judge looked at the man and said, you know, you look like a nice guy to me. I think I'm going to let you go free. Would that be justice? <laughs> no, we know that. But what if it was the judge's brother? And the judge loved him more than anyone else in the world. And he said, I love you. You're my brother. I can't condemn you. I'm going to let you go free even though I know you're guilty of murder. Would that be justice? No, you see, love does not undo the necessity for justice. God, in His justice, must judge us. But God is loving, and He has reached out to us, and He's provided a way for us to be close to Him that satisfies His holy, just nature. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, who would you say Jesus is? Your answer to that question is one of the most important answers you'll ever give. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is God in the flesh. John 1.14 says, And the Word, in the context you could see that's talking about Jesus, and Jesus became flesh, was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ never sinned and displayed the glory of God. The scriptures tell us that Jesus was tempted in every point like as we are, yet without sin, because He is God. And He came to earth, took on a human body, so that He could give Himself in exchange for us. The concept of an exchange is very simple. You see, in my sin, I'm condemned away from God. But in his righteousness, he could have a perfect relationship with God. And the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ took my sin upon himself. There's a verse in the Bible that tells us that Christ once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. I'm the unjust one. He's the just one.